G'day again, my name's Paul Morris. It's been great to have you with us throughout these conversations entitled Stronger Together. And uh, we're joining with creating communities and various members, leaders of the community, uh, taking their advice on how we might cope through this time together. Today we have with us Alan Trainer. He's the founder of Creating Communities. G'day, Alan. Paul. Great to have you with us again, Alan. In this time of COVID-19 and uncertainty, uh, one of the parts of our community that obviously has been, we've been talking about a lot, but haven't really touched on is the elderly. How do you think we should be uh, thinking of them as if we're gonna be stronger together? Well, I sort of fit in the bottom end of that category. So I'm sure it, what I have to say is probably considered to be topical for myself. The first thing is I th- think it's so important that we're respectful. Now, there are already jokes around that this disease is the boomer remover. So what, what sort of message is that giving to older people? Does it mean they're expendable? And to me, that's just so disrespectful it turns my stomach. Because we need to look at the, at the role that older people or the older people that we have in our society today have played over their life. And if we think about that life that they've led and the Australia that it's created for us, we should be not just grateful, we should be honouring of the older people that have shaped our, of our society. And it, it's probably an interesting time to think about where, what their life journey has been and even talk to them about it. Have, give them a call and have a chat to them about it. And I remember being on your radio show uh, And we talked about lessons we'd learned. And one of them was lessons we learned from older people. But then we also talked about what what was the story of our family? Because we're all migrants in Australia apart from our First Nations people. And if you think about the people who would be considered the elderly now, they're the people who came out to Australia after the Second World War. They were the ones who were displaced. They were the ones who took enormous risks so that the young people of our society today can live in what is probably the safest place on earth with a magnificent health system, with a great climate, with a government which is being generous, with all sorts, with food, with clean water. All of those assets are present because of the older generation that is in our society today. So I think honouring and respect is the first thing that we should offer to these people. And fair to say in that, it's possible that we're overlooking a a wealth of of gold in terms of how to cope through through difficult times, saying that, you know, it seems that many people have lived through those those difficult times. It's a very important point to recognise that a lot of these folk are called the silent generation because they survived in the era between the Depression and the Second World War, now, which was probably the, the hardest decade or two in the life of Australia or in the country from which they came. So yes, they survived. I, I've heard stories of recently of people who came out from Poland with nine children and lived in a two bedroom house in a country town and got by. They, they've survived crisis after crisis after crisis. To them, this is probably just the next crisis but it's something that they can't control. Where in, in those former times, they could work harder, they could cook, they could, they could do all sorts of things to actually fight the conditions that they were in and thrive, or even just survive to start with, but thrive as a result of those skills. It would be great to hear their stories today. The stories of how they've survived before and their mindset about how to survive now. One of the obviously current difficulties is in order to keep the elderly well, we're asking them to be more isolated almost than everyone else. But of course, at this time of their life, we want to be with them because we don't know how long they're going to be with us. How do you think families could adapt to this better and so we can stay connected? You know, that's such a, that's a heartbreaking situation. Now we have people in this office whose uh, parents are in aged care facilities where they are now no longer allowed to have visitors and some of them have dementia. And so they are, that connection that they had with their family was the most precious time of the week. So we should be thinking about ways of how do we zoom them into our conversations, make sure we make a telephone call. 
even if it's heartbreaking for us. Because I know that the people from this office who are doing that cry because they are seeing their parents not understanding what's going on, not being able to do much else because of their, the limits of their mind these days. So we're the ones who should be making the effort to try and stay connected, even if it's sending them snail mail, sending them cards. You know, one of my grandsons, and I'm not talking about the elderly here, we, we, had, a, we had a physically distant social catch up the other day with our grand with a couple of our grandchildren and one of them who's nearly three made a lego flower for his nana donna and his mum texted it to her that brought great joy to donna what let's think of ways that we can send our love in all sorts of different ways to our to the older people in our community uh, as you're speaking, I'm thinking of the current trend around birthdays where people are doing drive-by drive, drive -by birthdays. You know, people on their front porch and people are going past in their cars with streams and balloons. Maybe we should start driving by some uh, old people's homes and just sending our love like that and get creative. Great idea. I wonder whether it would be possible to have a minstrel <laughs> just go into the forecourt of an aged care facility and sing some of the old songs from that era or a person on a keyboard, because I know that a lot of the older people who are having trouble with some forms of dementia remember the old hymns. So perhaps a keyboard and one person banging out some of the old, um, you know, yeah. my faith is built on nothing less, you know, those sorts of things may well be that, that just that token of love and respect that we can offer. It certainly would help the gig community as well because I know there's no other crowds at the moment. They might be, uh, be happy to have some old people join in their songs. Would you have a stronger together tip for the community in regards to the elderly? I've got a couple of little quick things. Firstly, honour and respect. Stop telling jokes about boomer remover. That's just, that's disgusting. Start thinking of ways to show respect. Even on the walks, we walk along um, the same pathway with a breeze and, so, and, and physically distanced. Let's smile at the older person and go, g'day, lovely to have you here with us. So let's make that little bit extra of an effort when we're physically distant to be socially connected to older people. And I love your ideas about, let's see what we can do about organising some drive-by aged care facilities and just tooting our horns or some small gesture. It's great. Alan Trainer, thanks for joining us again. Pleasure. Thanks for uh, joining in the Stronger Together conversations. You can check them out on your Creating Communities platform. We'd love to talk to you again soon. And until then, stay safe, look out for each other, follow the government's advice around COVID-19, take care of yourself and loved ones. And don't forget, we are Stronger Together.